Yes, sir, boys, my prodigies, my youngest movement guy is finally here. Y'all have been harassing me for this for like the past month. Finally here. Stop asking me. <laughs> you feel me? So first things first, for all my console guys, y'all can do everything in here except tap strafing, obviously. So apply this to your game. You will get better movement, I promise you. Um, for my keyboard players, if you're here for some reason, I guess you're trying to switch the controller because you think movement on controller is so OP. I promise you, it's not. It's more convenient, but it's not as consistent. If not, you're probably one of those just here to hate. You know, if that's the case, get a life, do something else. I promise you, it's not affecting you or the game, right? So yeah, before the guy starts, get this to 5,000 likes. Need 5K likes. The last one is only at like 4K with 90K views, by the way. So. Give this one a 5,000 likes. Yeah, we're gonna jump straight into the guy right here. All right, so before we get into the guy, we gotta set up the binds on Steam and whatnot. And I'm gonna show y'all my button layout before I do that. So this is my button layout, my in-game button layout. And you have to decide and think about these binds because these binds will correlate with your Steam config. So let's go into Steam right now. Now, a lot of people ask me since Steam has done this update, they updated this um, controller config screen. Um, and a lot of people are confused on how to use this and whatnot. I'm gonna show you guys how to get the old one because I don't use this one. So all you wanna do is you wanna come to view, then hit small mode. Then your Steam is gonna be in this little window like this. And all you wanna do is just come to Apex, right click that and hit Steam config, edit Steam controller configuration. As you can see, you get the old screen. So now I'm going to clear out everything because a lot of people just still don't know how to set up Steam configs. It's very easy, but I'm going to show you guys all from scratch. All right. So to set up tap strafing, you want to come to left stick, mode shifting, style of input, directional pad. And now, mode shift button, this is a button that you're actually gonna tap straight with. So a lot of people use this for left stick. I personally use it for square, square on the PlayStation controller or X on the Xbox controller. So for me, I'm gonna hit X and now I'm gonna start setting up the tap straight. So you wanna hit um, the directional key. So it's gonna be W, A, S, and D. Okay, so come to W, hit W, click back on it, show activators. Changes to long press. Some people use regular, I use long. Turn this all the way down. Hold to repeat, turn this on, and turn the rate all the way up as well. And that's all you have to do. And you have to repeat the same process for all of the directions. All right, so after you set up everything, that's all for the tap strafing. As y'all know, I have two tap strafe buttons. So I tap strafe with square and then I tap strafe with the right bumper. So we're going to come to right bumper here and we're going to bind this to W and we're going to do the exact same thing. All right, so that's it for tab strafing. Now I'm just gonna walk you guys through the rest of my Steam config. So I have my start button binded to my interact button. So we're gonna come here. We're gonna remap this to left stick and then we're gonna come back to left stick, show activators and turn turbo on. So this acts like um, a scroll wheel to pick up items. So for example, if you're landing with somebody and you're trying to beat them to the loot, all you have to do is just hold this button. You don't have to spam, spam click it or anything like that. You just have to press it one time, press and hold it, and you get the loot majority of the time. All right, so inspect, we're gonna come to touchpad. You wanna make sure this says swap to unify pad, right? So look, swap to split pad. Right now, this touchpad only works as one button, but if you set it to split pad, you can bind it to two buttons. So the left side will act as one and the right side will act as another button. So come to the left one. We're going to hit trackpad click. And we're going to set two binds up for this. OK, so remove that. Turn multi button on. Press I and three. So I is for inspect and then three is for holster. 
So in game, you want to go to your actual keyboard binds and make sure I is set up as inspect and same with three for holster. And then for this side, I keep it the same. So this is how I open up like my menu and like my loot menu and all that. All right. And I got some extra sauce for y'all. So look, I'm going to show y'all guys how to wall run later in the tutorial. So we want to come to D pad and we're going to set this to style of input directional pad again and you can put this to the same button you tap strafe with however i put mine to the right bumper which is um my forward tap strafe so i'm gonna hit right bumper and what you want to do you bind this to w a s and d and you don't want to put turbo on these i'm going to explain why later so you can set that up if you want to so let's get right into the guide man i forgot to say so the way this works every time you press and hold right bumper or whatever you bind this to um your d-pad turns into key binds so w a s and d so if i hit left on my d-pad it'll act as a w d you know etc all right so i got the controller on the screen right now so for tap strafing we want to make sure our tap strafe works so for me again my tap strafe is square and the right bumper and if I just hold the right bumper, it acts as W, which is forward. So I can just hold this button and it'll tap strafe me forward. And then for square, I can press and hold this and flick my left stick in any direction and it will tap strafe. Um, little troubleshooting here. So a lot of people ask since the last guide, um, a lot of people were having trouble with like long press in general, um, especially with the W input. So I'm gonna tell y'all right now, long press um we did a lot of testing after that guide and we figured out that long press is not a good bind to bind to the left stick knowing that most people bind their tap strafe into the left stick um you just want to bind your tap strafe to something else instead of the left stick and mind you guys for me see this is why i have two buttons so this right bumper is w for me so i don't even use w when i'm holding square I only use this to like rasp strafe or like, you know, tap strafe left, backwards or right. In my opinion, if you don't use a left stick, so if you use an actual button or a bumper or whatever, in my opinion, I feel like the tap strafing is a lot more responsive and sometimes stronger. I don't want to say stronger, but it so you guys can, you know, hop in the range and play around with that. But that's um, what, you know, like me, Kayo, Guo. You know, a lot of my homies, like, that's kind of what we figured out. All right, so let's get into the guide. So I'm going to go over RAS strafing. RAS strafing is very, you know, simplified on controller. You know, sorry to my keyboard players, but, you know, we kind of have no choice but to, you know, use turbo and whatnot. So all you want to do is you just hold your tap straight button and just flick your left stick in a circle like that. And that is literally what a RAS strafe is. Very effortless, very simple on controller. Like I said, you don't have to do too much. Um, this is really good when you're fighting people. So, you know, I'm fighting this guy right here. As you can see, I'm tap strafing in mid air while shooting him. Disclaimer, so if you tap strafe, um, depending on your binds, if you tap strafe, your game will go into keyboard mode and you'll lose aim assist. So to Make it not do that. You just want to make sure you're holding like your stick at all times. So like the left stick, for example, as you can see, like I won't get aim assist, but if I hold the left stick, I'll get aim assist while I'm doing that. Um, Rass strafing is really good for like bubble fighting and stuff too. So I'm gonna try to put a clip if I can find one so I can show y'all like in-game examples and whatnot. All right, yeah, so with long press tab strafing, it works very similar to regular, but it's a little bit different. So, um, for example, a lot of people say they have problems with long press, like it'll be delayed or it'll stop working after a while. That's never happened to me. I don't know why. Um, I think for me, it's probably just because I'm used to it. So the tab strafe, um, majority of the time when I tab strafe, I do it in a circular motion. So if you pay attention to my stick, as you can see, I'm doing it kind of in a circle or a C motion instead of just flicking backwards on the stick. It will work like that, as you can see. 
but sometimes it can be inconsistent. So to try to get around that, all you wanna do is just kind of flick it in a C motion. And the faster you tap strafe after you jump, the stronger your tap strafe will be. All right, so you can utilize tap strafing like when you do wall bounces and stuff. So to do wall bounces, um, you know, you just come up to the wall, slide into it, you know, jump off of it. Um, you can actually push your left stick the opposite direction from the wall. So as you can see, this wall is to my right. So we're gonna slide into it and hold the left stick the opposite way. And on top of that, you can do fatigue wall bounces like this to where you don't need momentum. So all you wanna do is you just jump one time. And as you can see, we have jump fatigue and you just come up to the wall like this. And then you can do an actual wall bounce instead of getting like a, like a as wall bounce like this or not like that. Oh, oh, I guess I'm just too good at it. Hold on. All right, so right here. So this is the difference between a, a regular wall bounce and then a fatigue wall bounce like that. And then you could, you can repeat this process over and over and over. So as y'all can see, what I'm doing is when I bounce off, I'm tap strafing back towards the wall. And I'm just repeating the same thing over and over. And also, you can get a little wall run action. So if you slide into the wall with um, a decent amount of velocity like this, you can hold your stick to the right or to the left and you'll wall run for a second. Now, wall running is not really that good on controller. And that's why we set up the D-pad thing earlier. So I'm going to show you guys right now. All right. So with the D-pad direction, as you can see, if I, you know, press my D-pad and stuff. So that button. So whenever I hold square, my D-pad turns into keybind. So as you can see, if I just press and hold right, it'll act as an actual keybind, not just me like pressing my stick to the left or the right, because that's not the same thing. Because keyboard players, when they move in any direction, they get lurch. But when we move our left stick, we don't get lurch. So as you can see, if I come up to this wall, I can do wall running. As you can see, if I try to do it with the stick, it's not really going to work that good. Even though it kind of gave me a decent one. So yeah, it gives me one like that. And here it is with the keybind. So what you want to do, um, you don't even have to slide into the wall. You can literally just jump all the wall, jump on the wall, can't talk. And then you can, you know, hit A or D. So jump onto the wall. As you jump onto it, you want to press that button to activate the directional pad. And as soon as you hit the wall, that's when you want to hit A or D. Kind of like that. So basically wall running, you can't really do wall running on controller. I mean, you can, but like I said, it's not gonna be as good as binding actual key binds to your controller. All right, so to get back into wall jumping and whatnot, um, to wall jump off of small walls like this, cause as you can see, if I try to do it, it's gonna just, it's gonna leave me on the wall. I get stuck here. So what you wanna do? is you want to come to the wall and you want to push your left stick in the opposite direction. So this wall is to my left, as you can see, just slide onto it, push the left stick back and then you wall bounce off of it every time. You can do that on just about any wall. So with wall bouncing, majority of that is pretty much just fatigue jumping or not fatigue jumping, fatigue bouncing or whatnot. Also with tap strafing, you can tap strafe into a slide. Um, I do this a lot, so you know, all you have to do is just tap straight and slide. Uh, this is a very good mechanic you can do to get away, or you can use this for movement in your fights, like that, as you can see. I can be fighting somebody right here, tap straight, slide, get some momentum, and you'll slide backwards or in any direction that you want. All right, so for super gliding, I'm not the best super glider because I play on a high FPS. But if you look on the top right, my FPS is capped to 180. The lower you cap this, the easier it is to super glide. That's why super gliding on console is so easy since they're already capped to 60. So anyways, so the way I super glide, y'all see the little white reticle in the middle of my screen. So when you climb, that reticle moves, as you can see. So when it stops moving, as soon as it stops moving, 
that's when you want to super glide like that and obviously the super glide all you want to do is you want to while holding forward you jump and then you crouch at the same time and you'll super glide when you super glide you can tap strafe after the super glide so as you can see you can just tap strafe in any direction for zip lines so the way i super jump so consistently it's really because of the way my binds are set up so i have one thumb pressing left stick which is my interact and then my other finger is double tapping a which is making me super jump hella consistent so so the way you super jump all you want to do is interact and you want to jump two times like that um the timing to it it's not really hard if you're like brand new um you kind of do have to learn it but it's not a very hard timing at all so pretty much as your character is getting closer to the zip line you just want to you know double tap a two times or double tap jump whatever controller you're on and i already told y'all this in my last guide but you can tap strafe out of this so as you can see just like that all you want to do is when you double tap a you just tap strafe right after and you can tap strafe in just about any direction off of that too if y'all watch me enough y'all know i do this in um construction a lot like the zip line on the side of construction like on the roof um i use it on that zip line a lot um so as far as like actual mechanics go that's about it um i'm just going to talk about like little things that'll make your movement better so if you're on pc um you know we you know bind it the instant holster so instead of you know like holding y or triangle like that we can just press the button one time and it'll holster so you want to make sure you're holstered pretty much um not at all times but whenever you can so whenever you're not fighting whenever you're running away or whenever the time is appropriate you just want to holster because when you holster you get more movement speed which enables you to you know execute your mechanics a little bit better also so say you're fighting somebody you can do a quick slide like that so all you want to do is just holster boom you can slide and you can keep your momentum just you know keep holstering and you can do that over and over and over and over feel me um another thing with holster um so you can actually switch weapons when you holster so you can't do this actually if you don't have instant holster so console players y'all cannot do this so basically what you want to do is you want to press your switch weapon button and then holster oh, oh shit so i like that and then if I pull back out my gun, it'll pull out my other gun. So again, you just want to hit Y, then holster. And then when you pull back out your gun, it'll be on your other gun. So this is really good. So let's say, you know, you're running low on ammo for this gun. You just want to do that. And then it'll pull out your other gun. All right, so another very useful mechanic. Um, I forgot the exact name for it. It's like a fast reloading. Um, a lot of y'all probably do this subconsciously. Like y'all don't even know y'all do it. Y'all probably do it on accident. Um, uh, my boy Prada did cover this. I'm gonna put everybody's like links in the description that I shout out in here. Uh, it works with some guns. It doesn't work with every gun in the game. I know it works with like most SMGs and whatnot. So basically when you reload, when your clip goes to zero at the bottom right, um, you just holster and you pull back out your gun, right? And then it'll do like a little fast reload animation like that. So instead of doing this whole reload animation in a person's face, you can just holster, you know, get like a little bit of movement in between. And then you can do that. So that's like a really big game changer if you don't do that already. Um... Another tip, um, this is something I personally do. Um, whenever I'm running, especially when I'm running away, I just spam jump like that, kind of like a standing B hop. And when you do that, you can pretty much tap strafe. So say like this is a corner, like this is like a hallway or something. I'm getting chased. And instead of doing this, being super slow about it, I mean, it's not really gonna change that much, but you know, while you're running, you kind of just want to be 
B hopping, boom, you can tap strafe in the hallway and it's gonna make it a little bit harder for your enemies to hit you and whatnot. So that's literally about it. Like I said, it wasn't gonna be any different from the first guide. Um, Cause the way, the way movement works in this game, you pretty much just have to put all these mechanics together. And the more you do that, the better your movement will be and whatnot. All right, so movement guy is pretty much over so that's about it that's all i have to say like i said i'm just telling y'all everything i do i'm not about to cover every single little thing in the game but for the most part this is what i do so yeah make sure you drop a like if you enjoy it if you learn something make sure y'all subscribe 20k is around the corner man so make sure you subscribe please i'm trying to hit it before the end of the year and i'm out peace